So after visiting the shrines of Karbala, we have taken a trip into the desert about 40 kilometers outside of the city to Al Uqaida fortress, placed at the point between the Arabian Peninsula and also Syria, used as a strategic location to prevent attacks, but also as a way station for pilgrims going towards Mecca. Al Qadim, Saddam Hussein, Bani, Mijd al Iraq, the great leader, Saddam Hussein, the protector of Iraq and the builder of civilization, something like that. <laughs> Another mark of Saddam, not just at Babylon, but all over Iraq. What a view as I stand at the top here after climbing those stairs. This enormous rectangular shaped fortress dating back to the 8th century, built during the time of the Abbasid Caliphate. The outer wall is unbelievable and the fact that we are the only people here and we can just walk within its skeleton is amazing. Not a place I had very high on my Iraq to see list, but somewhere that has arguably impressed me the most alongside the shrines. Accessing places like this has been made so much easier thanks to Bill Weekend, the tour company I've been working with on this trip and uh, Hussein, my guide, but now I would say friend. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and also Mohammed, my driver, or the driver for this trip. Um, shukran. 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 The link for Bill Weekend is in the video description. Uh, and yeah, you're always welcome, everybody. Yeah. Corridors seemingly endless. It has a remarkable eeriness to it that is quite satisfying in a way. You can sort of explore, wander around like a huge playground. Made it to the top of the fortress here. Long reaching views out towards the desert. And the sun and the rest of the fortress. The last rays of sunlight over there as I focus the camera as it disappears into the desert, Kurdistan and Turkey in that direction, Syria, Jordan and Saudi Arabia to the south. Kabbalah in that direction.
Hello, good morning and welcome back to Iraq. Today I am leaving Karbala and taking the journey south first to the city of Najaf which contains another holy shrine and a very large cemetery which we'll get to and then afterwards all the way down to Nasiriya to visit the great ziggurat of Ur. So we have now arrived here in Najaf at the Wadi as Salam, the world's largest cemetery with over six million bodies buried beneath the ground here. We are going to head further into it and towards the shrine here in Najaf, which I'll tell you a bit more about in a bit. You may be wondering why do so many Shia Muslims want to be buried all in the same place? Well, according to history, Abraham bought land in this region and Imam Ali said that this land was holy and he was buried close by here and we're going to see the shrine later. And so for that reason, many people want to be buried as close to it as possible. Navigating your way through all of the tombs and gravestones is a bit of a maze. It's insane to think how many people are buried beneath the ground here. Daily burials have been going on here for over 1,400 years and still today people wish to be laid to rest at this site. Oh, it does, the bottle smells. The bottle, yeah. But I think the water gonna... itself, yeah. I can't smell so, it either. So yeah, the, the tradition goes that they have to uh, buy some water to uh, pour it on the tomb mm. and this is just a tradition and it's in these kind of pink bottles yeah it's always pink i don't know why yeah it stands out so you can see it amongst all the, exactly. the tombstones exactly. i suppose exactly. yeah. we have driven on a little bit further to this car park here of all places for a vantage point over the world's largest cemetery and take a look at this. Many Shia believe that Ali holds the power to intercede and ease their suffering during their passing from this worldly life to heaven. And if buried here, quite often you will see a similar quotation to this. They will be raised from the dead on judgment day with their spiritual leader. It translates something like that anyway. And wow, what a view.
Within walking distance from the cemetery is the shrine of Imam Ali. We are heading there now and as I said, the burial site of the cousin of Prophet Muhammad. And even today, Sistani, who is the equivalent of the Pope for Shias, is based here in Najaf. In the lead up to the shrine, there is a large, long running souk, just like in Baghdad and Karbala, full of places you can pick up gold, juice on the other side as well, here, so plenty of things. Shukran Habibi. <laughs> Something to try. Mm. Wow, that's so good. Shukran. Unlike the previous video in Karbala, I didn't get permission to film inside the shrine of Najaf with my big camera. You're only allowed to take in your mobile phone. And so all of the clips that you're seeing now were taken from my iPhone. The Imam Ali shrine in Najaf is a place where the cousin of the Prophet Muhammad is buried. The Shias consider Ali as their first Imam, just like the ones in Karbala and Baghdad. It is full of opulence and decoration. Each year, millions of pilgrims visit this shrine and pay tribute to Imam Ali. And the first structure built here was in 1786. Now, according to Shiite belief, buried within this mosque next to Ali are the remains of both Adam and Noah. And yes, that's the Adam and Noah that you are probably familiar with. I think I might have even preferred this shrine to the ones at Karbala just for the fact that it seems a bit less hectic and a little bit more peaceful, more space to sort of sit around and find your own spot to observe the more quiet atmosphere. After visiting the shrine here at Najaf, we then headed further south to finish the day at the Great Ziggurat of Ur. So after a fairly long drive from Najaf, we have reached the governor in which Nasiriya is located and we're here at the great ziggurat of Ur, which was once a great ancient city-state here in Mesopotamia. We're going to head towards it now as we're here perfectly in time for sunset. Another UNESCO World Heritage Site here in Iraq. It is also referred to as the Great Ziggurat as I make my way up its steps. At the top with breathtaking views all around the open dry land 
sunset again for the second day in a row after visiting the fortress yesterday. You're probably wondering what a ziggurat is. It's a sort of stone-like structure, not too different from a pyramid with a set of steps and terrace levels, essentially making a connection between humans and God. Built here by the Sumerians in around the 21st century BC, there are actually around 25 ziggurats left in the world today. Most of them are here in Iraq and a few of them can also be found in Iran, but quite unique to the region. And again, a great evening to soak up the sunset with relative quiet all around. The moon is visible above as well. Just beside the ziggurat is a very famous arch, the first in recorded history, in fact. And this was a temple dating back all the way to the time of the Sumerians. After visiting, oh, we are now here at a restaurant, grabbing some dinner. Mohammed, uh, my driver, always smiling. And uh, Hussein, always on the phone. <laughs> uh, grabbing some uh, food here. I've got uh, chicken mandi with rice, I believe, um, which I've tried in Saudi before. And this kind of a uh, bean dish as well. What's it called, Mohammed? This one? Fasulia. Uh, Fasulia. Fasulia. I hope I got that right. Let's uh, dig in. Now here at my hotel room in Nasiria, just stopping here for the night before waking up at 2.30 a.m. in order to reach the Mesopotamian marshes. We're going to have breakfast with the local people there and take in the sunrise, go on a small boat trip. It's going to be an amazing experience. Links to Bill Weekend in the video description as usual, and I will see you on the next one.